Hey guys, Vlad here with AVT Astro and today as always I've got an interesting Astro topic for you guys. For those of you guys that might not be familiar, I run a little Astro blog called avt-astro.com and of course this YouTube channel, so if you're not subscribed, please do consider subscribing. Over the years I've had the privilege of owning over 100 scopes, more accessories than I could count, so I'm kind of an Astro nerd. All right, so with all that out of the way, let's get to the topic of the video. So recently I was contacted by a company called Move Shoot Move. Uh, that's their website over there about a couple of entry level scopes that they've had. And since Christmas is, you know, technically around the corner for 2022, I figured this would be a good, uh, you know, way to test out a couple of scopes that um, could potentially make a good Christmas present for, you know, you or a loved one. So the two scopes in question are actually kind of interesting. We've got a wide field refractor and a longer focal length Mac. So I'm going to pop these guys open. I've never opened these boxes and I'll get back with you guys in a sec. All right guys, so with all the boxes out of the way, let's get to the fun part. Let's take a look at what's actually included in the boxes and all the equipment. So uh, the first little scope that we have going on, this is a wide field refractor. So this is really good for, you know, doing wide field type of work, like looking at, you know, like the Andromeda galaxy, uh, star clusters, you know, stuff like that. Uh, 80 millimeters, 400 millimeter focal length. Uh, so that'll give you a very wide field of views. It does include a camera adapter to take pictures uh, through the telescope. I've actually used this specific, you know, camera adapter before. It actually works pretty well. Uh, we'll see how it works with this tripod. It does come with the 3X Barlow lens, which lets you triple the magnification of any eyepiece. And it does come with a couple of eyepieces. Uh, they're actually labeled here. So there's a 20 millimeter, and these look like probably modified achromatic eyepieces and then a 10 millimeter so a couple of eyepieces to get you started uh, the diagonal that it comes with is a 45 degree which is kind of more usually for terrestrial type of use we'll see how that works out um, overall actually you know the tripod that they give you um, you know it's plastic and stuff but it's actually you know kind of on the beefier side so that's kind of a welcome sign but we'll you know We'll see how it works. Uh, optics on this are definitely coded, so that basically means it'll give you better images, special night type of uh, viewing uh, stuff. And then the finder scope that they give is a red dot finder. Some people love them, some people don't. I actually really like them personally. I use them on a lot of my scopes. So moving on to the uh, 90 millimeter Mac. I believe this thing has a focal length of uh, 1250 millimeters which it does, that's so right there. Very nice multi-coated optics on this. Um, actually, now from what uh, Move, uh, Go Move has told me, uh, Mead uh, is, or the company that makes optics for Mead makes uh, their scopes as well. And this really looks like an ETX to me. I mean, this reminds me of the Mead ETX line, uh, which is probably a really good thing, actually. Uh, this thing will have a flip mirror, so you could do, you could shoot out the light here to do uh, photography or appear to the eyepiece. Overall, very nice construction. This thing looks really nice. All right, now, so why these two specific scopes? I actually requested these specifically. Uh, to me, if you're just started out in astronomy or, you know, you maybe you have a child that wants to get into astronomy, um, a wide field refractor is actually a pretty good way to go uh, in this size in the 80 millimeter because that gives you a nice grab and go scope that's easy to set up. I mean, and actually, you know, that's one thing that I was actually impressed with these guys with the company, right? They actually said, I mean, check this out. This is this right on their website. The best telescope is the one that you'll actually use. I mean, wow, like, um, and you know, from, I think the gal that I was talking to from the company, her name is Claire. You know, it sounds like she actually, you know, she's actually into astronomy. She actually knows like a fair bit about it, you know, which is 
kind of cool because I've had, you know, previous companies kind of reach out to me. And usually, you know, like I just kind of get a sense that they're a marketing person. They're not really in the hobby to where is these, you know, like the, the gal that I talked to and just from reading their website, some of the information on here, it's actually like, you know, true and accurate. But anyway, getting back to the scopes. A good way to go gives you a nice wide field scope. Uh, it's one that you'll probably want to keep around anyway, even if you do progress uh, eventually to a larger scope. Assuming you already have something like this, or you're just more into, like, you know, you want to look more at the planets and the moon because maybe you live in the city, light pollution is really bad. Uh, one of these max, I mean, man, check out how small this is. Um, and this will give you awesome, awesome optics. Although I haven't tested it yet, but I'm assuming if this is a mead made product or the, the same um, factory that makes mead products, this is going to have awesome optics. So we'll, we'll, we will, of course, verify that. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, um, not as uh, entry level friendly because uh, this is a more expensive model than that and it actually does not come with the tripod so you'll have to provide your own mount. I'll actually just use this on a telescope mount. I won't really bother with the photo tripod. Although you could do that, it would have to be a pretty beefy one. Anyhow, um, I am going to you know get outside when it's clear actually. We're, I'm going to do some intestine of that. So I'll see you guys out there. All right, guys, welcome outside. As you can see, it's a beautiful evening going on. We've got Mount St. Helens going on out there and the moon going out and out there. We've got our two scope contenders set up already, cooling down and acclimating to the environment. So we're going to be taking a look at the moon shortly and then hopefully the plants a little bit later. See you in a bit. All right, ladies and germs, it's finally dark outside. So I'm going to use my scientific instruments, right? My wife's cell phone and the headlamp that was sent to me to take pictures of the moon. <laughs> All right, so just real quick. Um, so the little refractor, the 80 millimeter, it did come with the cell phone uh, adapter that you can use to, you know, shoot uh, like the moon and brighter objects with your cell phone and this is kind of how it looks like this is one that i've had before it's essentially the same thing around an eyepiece and you know it'll essentially go into your focuser you put your cell phone here and you know it can take pictures i'm just gonna you know i've done this uh, once or twice before so i'm just gonna hand hold this and you know kind of show you guys how it's done real quick so basically the first thing you're gonna do right is these do come with the red dot finder so you see that red dot right there so you're just gonna line that right on the moon and then once you look in here, you should start to see the moon. All right, so that's just a quick little view that's kind of overexposed. But let's switch over to photo mode, photo mode on my wife's phone and see what we can capture. All right, so I'm centering up the moon right now and I'm actually using the uh, 25 millimeter plus eyepiece that came with a little Mac. Uh, with, both, with both scopes. The reason I'm doing that is because I want you guys to get a fair comparison of what this image size scale is with uh, between basically both the scopes. So I'm just hold, hand holding the camera and I'm snapping some snapshots right now and uh, I will post in the best one of the refractor. All right, so we got some good snapshots with the refractor, I hope anyway. <laughs> So we're moving on to the little Mac. Um, so I've already aligned the finder scopes on these. You know, just a quick tip while I'm kind of pointing this. Uh, the first time you do this, you do want to do this actually during the day, like point them at a, you know, like, I don't know, like a utility pole or something somewhere that's not near the sun. And kind of, you know, point the scope at it, uh, align the finder scope with them, and you're good to go. All right, now, so I've got the moon in there. And I'm starting the capture of the moon through the little Mac. All right, look at that. I mean, check that out. I mean, check out how much bigger the moon is. I'm actually gonna have to increase the exposure. So I'm in the pro mode of the camera, right? So same uh, zoom lens, cause you know, it's got, this is a, 
uh, Note 20 Ultra, so it's got three cameras, right? Same camera. And check out how much bigger the moon is. I mean, same eyepiece. I'm going to post on the magnifications right now that the 25 millimeter provides with both these scopes. But yeah, I mean, much, much larger with the Mac because it does have a focal ratio and focal length that is much longer and more suited towards the plants on the moon. All right, guys. So check this out. I was actually uh, found this neat little trick. Uh, hopefully I capture this on video. So I put the cap back in on the little Mac, right? And let me grab the camera and show you. Look at that. <laughs> Isn't that cool? That's just like a little projection of the moon on the just dust cap. <laughs> it's like, you know, in perfect focus and everything. So I'm moving the scope around right now a little bit. So you kind of see that, it, you know, this isn't like video trickery or anything like that. This is actually <laughs> just kind of a cool projection of, of the moon on the cap. So anyhow, I am going to spend, you know, probably a good hour or two observing both the moon. Um, actually, I'm not sure if it's going to show up in the video. Yeah, there it is. So that's Saturn out there. You know, fairly high in the sky, so there's the moon, Saturn, and then Jupiter's rising there. So I'm going to, you know, spend a good amount of time observing those, probably do a couple of double stars just to kind of really evaluate the optics on both of these scopes. Um, this one, you know, I'm pretty sure that the optics are going to be good. That one I'm going to test a little bit more. Um, although, you know, obviously I'm going to test this guy as well. So I've got all the stock eyepieces. And of course, for anybody that's watching my channel, you guys know that I love the batter zoom. So I'm going to try this, uh, the batter zoom with both scopes, just, you know, to try a better eyepiece. And I'm going to try a better diagonal with the little refractor. Um, so anyhow, yeah, we'll meet back up in the office out there and, you know, kind of conclude the video. And I'll tell you what I think about both these guys. All right, guys, welcome back inside. So I had a few hours to observe with the scopes last night. It was a good time overall. Um, so what did I think about the scopes? Um, so this guy, as I said, it's more of a entry level wide field instrument. So I'm posting in the magnifications that you get with the 20 millimeter and the 10 millimeter uh, eyepiece that it comes with, that it comes with. I'm not sure what design these are. I mean, they kind of look like plossels. They're actually, you know, you know, while I'm kind of speaking of these, not too bad of eyepieces at the price point. I mean, everything's kind of relative. If, you know, if I start comparing these to like my, uh, you know, high end eyepieces, of course, you know, they're, they're not going to be quite as good, right? But this is like a thousand dollar eyepiece. So we can't really, you know, compare it to that, right? So yeah, eyepieces are pretty good. Barlow, you know, it's pretty decent. Uh, the camera adapter that it comes with, I've used these many times before. They do work, you know, pretty well. The limiting factor though, like my only gripe really with this whole package really, it kind of comes down to the tripod. Um, it, it is serviceable, it does work. The balance point on this really, you know, this is something that the manufacturer might want to look into actually. Uh, it really, this little mounting block really needs to be back here, you know, for it to kind of balance better because right now it's really back heavy. And actually having the handle in the front like this does usually work better with these photo tripods. So if you get one of these, you know, by all means kind of mount it like this with the handle forward because that way you could go all the way down really easily and the balance is a little bit better. Optics, I had no issues with them. Uh, they produce nice crisp images. You know, the planets look good. I looked at a few double stars, um, deep sky objects for those wide field of views. Uh, that's really cool. Focus around this, you know, it's serviceable, it's decent. It does have some play that I'm posting the clip right now. You can't really see it too much in the clip, but it does kind of have some shift to the angle to it. Pretty typical for this price point scope. That's kind of really me, you know, net picking and stuff. I mean, that's, you know, you, most of these will have that at this price point. Uh, so good entry level scope. Uh, the other reason that I like this then is because even though, you know, like you say you get this as your first scope, you progress in the hobby, right? This is still going to be a good grab and go wide field instrument. I'm posting in uh, the magnification and the widest true field that you could get with this because this is only an inch and a quarter uh, with the 24 millimeter 68 degree eyepiece, which would give it the widest field of view. So it's pretty wide, right? Um, so yeah, great grab and go scope. Okay, so we're kind of concluded with that one. What did I think about the little Mac? 
Uh, well, let's say if you already have one of these or some kind of maybe like a tabletop dub, right? And you're kind of noticing you're more into planetary lunar observing that type of deal. This is what the Mac is great for. I really enjoyed, you know, observing Saturn, uh, Jupiter with it last night. Uh, optics wise, uh, it's, I'd say, uh, you know, comparable to the Mead Max that I've used before, I still have an ETX 125 OTA. Uh, for those of you that have watched my channel, you guys have seen it. It's my grab and go scope. So I'm very familiar with them. Uh, pretty comparable. It works pretty much the same way. Nice crisp optics on them. Um, and then, yeah, all of the mechanics, all of the, uh, basically you know like fin finish is really good on it only gripe i kind of had with the actually first i really like this red dot finder but um the lens on it right it's actually a uh like a tinted like you know like almost like a sunglass lens i mean so obviously this thing was made to be used during the day um i mean it works you know at night but really it should be clear that, that was my only gripe with this uh, if you are going to use this because this does not come with the tripod if you're going to use this with the photo tripod it just screws right on um, if you're going to use this with any astronomy type of tripod, you will need a dovetail. I'll post a link in for a dovetail uh, to that. So now, yeah, if you're looking for a scope for yourself that's like a first or a second instrument, these are two really good options. Uh, if you're looking for a present for Christmas, you know, for a child, like the little refractor even comes with stickers that you could put on it. So that's pretty cool, all right? Um, so anyway, yeah, it'd make a really good Christmas present. And I think it is a good way to get into astronomy on a budget, you know, without, you know, spending, you know, much more than like a couple hundred bucks. This is a good package to get you started. So now, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys have any questions, comments, or anything like that, feel free to leave them in the thing below. Uh, if you're not subscribed, please do consider subscribing. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.